et dire aux athlètes russes euh, et, et aux biélorusses qu'ils ne sont pas les bienvenus euh, à Paris et dire aux athlètes ukrainiens et euh, à l'ensemble du peuple ukrainien que nous les soutenons euh, de façon très active et très forte. Et... This is my video update on this Sunday midday, March the 31st. Happy Easter to everyone that is celebrating Easter today. May you have a good and blessed Easter. Easter Sunday. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with another massive Russian missile and drone strike throughout all of Ukraine, Kiev, Odessa, as well as the west of Ukraine in the Lvov region and in an area known as Striyi, where the Russians hit this area six days ago. And uh, when they hit this area six days ago, it was thought that the Russians were going after, and they did go after, uh, military infrastructure, as well as, uh, as an airfield in this area in West Ukraine. And uh, the Russians were apparently going after the railway links from Europe into, uh, into Ukraine. But, but it is now becoming evident that the Russians are really targeting in the west of Ukraine a very big gas storage facilities. From what I understand, one of the biggest in all of Europe. And from what I understand, the European countries, the EU, they store a lot of their gas in this gas storage facility. So uh, all the talk about, about Ukraine from the collective West, Ukraine is going to become a big weapons producer. We're gonna build factories and facilities to turn Ukraine into the Silicon Valley of weapons manufacturing and weapons production. Well. That ain't gonna happen. That is not going to happen. Ukraine is, Ukraine is being completely demilitarized. And uh, the Russians are going after the Ukraine energy infrastructure in a big way. They're not about degrading the energy infrastructure anymore. They're about dismantling the energy infrastructure. And it's amazing that uh, for two years, the Russian military did not go after this, this big gas uh, storage facility, isn't it? It really speaks to, to the restraint of, uh, of the Russian military and the Putin administration. For two years, they could have hit this, uh, this gas storage facility and really done a lot of damage to, to not only Ukraine, but also to, to the European Union. Uh, if it is indeed the case that uh, the EU stores a lot of their gas in this facility, but the Russians, they laid off of this uh, gas uh, storage facility, but obviously over the past past couple of months, a lot has, uh, has happened and a lot has changed, and it does look like the Russian military, they are indeed taking off the gloves, and, uh, and you're going to have a lot of L's for Europe. You already have a lot of L's. For, uh, for Europe. If, uh, if the Russians do destroy this gas storage facility, well, obviously that's going to mean that the price of gas will, will go up, I imagine. The price of gas will go up if, if they completely destroy this facility and uh, energy prices going higher. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine military is going to the military production, weapons and drones and whatever else they're producing or trying to produce, well, that's not going to, to go so well. And, uh, and the EU military is all, the EU military is already depleted. The EU military is depleted. Uh, the Ukraine military is being, uh, destroyed and, and demilitarized. Anything that has to do with the military or military production is, is being dismantled in Ukraine. Um, Germany's in a recession. Yesterday, The Guardian reported that, uh, that the UK is indeed in a recession. The Guardian read an article, blow for Sunak as revised figures confirm UK went into recession last year. Latest estimates 
from ONS says the GDP declined by 0.03% in the final quarter of 2023. The plan was to destroy the Russian economy. The plan was to destroy the Russian economy and get regime change in Russia. And they've destroyed themselves. They have destroyed themselves. Good job, Europe. Good job, UK. Good job, Sunak. Olaf Schultz. Pirate Schultz. A lot of L's for, uh, for Europe. And they can't stop. They can't stop doing, uh, doing damage to, to themselves. Uh, yesterday, it was announced that the EU is going to be closing its airspace to a Turkish airline called South Wind. South Wind. The European Union has closed its airspace, European Union airspace, to Turkey's South Wind Airlines over its alleged ties to Russia. Swiss-based news outlet Aero Telegraph reported this week, according to the report, the measure is related to the sanctions against Russia over the Ukraine conflict. So, from what I understand, South Wind was flying from Turkey to Moscow. They were also running flights, I believe, from Turkey to Kaliningrad. And uh, the EU decided to close its airspace, the EU's airspace, not Poland's airspace, not Greece's airspace, not Cyprus's airspace or Italy's airspace. It's now the EU's airspace. Good job, EU member states. You've lost your airspace. You've lost sovereignty, control over your airspace to, to Ursula. Ursula van der Crazy now controls EU airspace. Good job. Good job, EU member states. Anyway, because uh, Southwind was operating these flights, um, it looks like the EU has decided now to, to close off the airspace to, uh, to Southwind. Making friends, the European Union, making all kinds of friends, huh? What else is going on? How about uh, Kaya Kallas? She's so stunning and brave, Kaya Kallas the Prime Minister of Estonia, she announced that she is withdrawing her candidacy to become the next NATO Secretary General. So sad. So sad. So upsetting that Kaya Kallis is not going to, to become the NATO Secretary General. It looks like the race is going to be between Johannes of Romania, who is uh, building a huge, massive NATO base in, uh, in Romania, and he is going up against WEF golden boy, the golden child of Klaus Schwab, Mr. Mark Rutte. <laughs> That's going to be the, the competition. Johannes of Romania going up against Klaus Schwab, golden boy, Mark Rutte. Who will win? Who will become the next NATO secretary general? Who will take over? for Stoltenberg. So Mark Rutte, the, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, is he still Prime Minister of Netherlands? Is, is Mark Rutte, does he still hold that office? Anyway, uh, since we're talking about the Netherlands, the commander of, uh, of NATO, who is from the Netherlands, and who is who's speaking a lot to the media in the past uh, couple of weeks, Mr. Bauer, I believe uh, Admiral Bauer, if that's his correct title, he, uh, he said that Russia poses no threat to NATO, but uh, Bauer, Bauer has a superpower and he can read Putin's mind. And he believes that uh, Putin does have his sights set on invading Europe. This is what uh, Bauer said, speaking to reporters in Riga on Friday. Bauer, who commanded the Dutch arm, armed forces between 2017 to 2021, said that there is no indication that Russia is planning to attack any NATO member state. While stressing that he did not think there is a direct threat, he suggested that Russia's ambitions go beyond Ukraine. Bauer said that meant that the U.S.-led military bloc should be better prepared for a possible standoff. More money to the military-industrial complex. Let's buy some more USMIC weapons. Let's pump up 
those US MIC companies' stocks. <laughs> right, right, Mr. Bauer? Commander or Admiral Bauer? Is that what this is all about? He knows, though, he knows that, uh, that Russia has its sights set on, on going beyond Ukraine. Russia's ambitions, this is the quote, Russia's ambitions go beyond Ukraine. How do you know that, Bauer? How do you know that? What do you know that uh, we don't know? Have you gotten some special intel which, uh, which indicates, which proves that Putin and Shoigu, Lavrov, Medvedev, are talking about going beyond Ukraine? Do you have some intel that suggests that that is what is going to happen? Please let us know, Mr. Bauer. Anyway, that is Bauer's statement. And uh, from the Russian side of things, well, from the BRICS side of things, they, uh, they are going to invite Serbia to the next BRICS uh, summit, which will take place, the big summit, which will take place in Kazan, Russia. I believe July or, or August is when the big BRICS summit is going to take place. And Serbia has been invited. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? To me, it tells me that, that Russia may want to go all the way in Ukraine and perhaps perhaps get a, get a connection to, to Serbia, maybe Hungary, Serbia. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that may be what, uh, what's in the works. Maybe that's what Bauer means when he says that Russia wants to go beyond Ukraine. Maybe, maybe BRICS wants to start bringing in some uh, European countries into, into the BRICS uh, group. Serbia, Hungary would be nice. I think it would be really cool to see Hungary become a part of BRICS. That would definitely change the game, wouldn't it? If Russia goes all the way, Odessa connects to Transnistria. You have Hungary there, you have Serbia there. That would be, that would be an interesting development. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know what the plans are, but I think it's interesting that Russia is, uh, is allegedly inviting Serbia to attend the, uh, the big BRICS summit. It doesn't mean that Serbia is going to be invited to join BRICS. It just means that Serbia has been invited to the, uh, to the big BRICS summit, but Serbia should definitely join BRICS if they get the invitation. Join BRICS, Serbia, definitely do it. So uh, yesterday we had the news that Alensky fired a whole bunch of, uh, of more people in his uh, administration. Now, I was talking about Alensky's firing of Danilov yesterday in my video, which wasn't really a firing, but more of a reassignment, because Danilov, Ukraine's, one of Ukraine's big intel chiefs, has been appointed ambassador of Moldova. And... Uh, and Zelensky is firing more people in his administration, a lot more people. But uh, the one standout is one of his closest aides who was with him from day one, from when he became uh, president of Ukraine. And even before that, he was involved in Zelensky's theater and production uh, company. And that is a guy who goes by the name of Sergei Sharif. I've never heard of Sergei Sharif, to be honest but he has been with Zelensky with from the very beginning. Anyway, he was fired yesterday along with a lot of other people. Ukraine President Zelensky fired his longtime associate and aide Sergei Sharif on Saturday. He has sacked multiple senior advisors in the past week amid an ongoing reshuffle of his administration. Sharif was one of the few remaining officials to have served alongside Alensky since day one of his presidency, assuming his post in May 2019, before getting into politics. He was a longtime close business associate of Alensky, with whom he had co-founded the Quartal 95, District 95 Comedy Studio. So this guy has been by Alensky's side from the very, very beginning. From the very beginning, he has been by Alensky's side. And now Alensky allegedly is firing Sharif. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that's what's going on here. There are two, there are two uh, uh, cases that could be going on with all these firings of uh, Alensky officials. There's two viewpoints. 
uh, viewpoint number one, the first analysis is that all of these people in and around Alensky, they're basically telling him that he's, uh, he's making wrong decisions, that he's delusional. What did Time magazine say when they uh, did the in-depth in report on Alensky that many people around him say he has um, a messiah complex? He's delusional and has a messiah complex. So the first uh, line of thinking is that is that Alensky, all these people around Alensky, they're telling him, bro, it's over. You're making bad decisions. It's time to, uh, maybe it's time to husband the, the military resources, fall back into, into a defensive position. Maybe it's time to negotiate with Russia. I don't know. Whatever. They're telling Alensky stuff that Alensky doesn't want to hear. That's the first line of thinking. And Alensky, he's getting very upset. And he's firing them. The other line of thinking is my line of thinking. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that is uh, throwing this out there. But um, maybe, just maybe, these people are going to Alensky. His buddies are going to Alensky. And they're saying, yo, uh, Volodymyr. It's over, man. So, uh, so reassign me, fire me, whatever, <laughs> do whatever you have to do. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my bags and suitcases of money and, and my homes and I need to, to get the F out of Dodge. That's what I think is really going on here. I don't know. <laughs> Most likely it's the first scenario, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Alensky's best buddy now is, is being fired. His best buddy that was with him from his comedy club uh, days, co-founded Kvartal 95, their production company, and all of a sudden, Alensky's firing, firing him. Either Alensky is going mad, either he is going mad and he is absolutely delusional and people are trying to talk some sense into him, or, or slowly, slowly, quickly, quickly, <laughs> people are, are, are getting out. They're jumping ship. That's what I think is really happening. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, more firings. You know, would, uh, would you invest in, in a business that, uh, that was firing all of its top executives? Every other day, it seemed like another top executive or top management was being fired by the CEO. Would you invest in that type of business? Would you think that that business had a future? Every, every other day, the, the senior vice president is fired, the, the chief operating officer is fired, the CTO is fired, a whole bunch of middle management is fired. Does that sound like a, like a healthy, prosperous, growing business, a business that has a future? Or does it sound like a business that is going under, that's about to, to go bankrupt? So, uh, yeah, Sharif. Never heard of this guy, Sharif. He's getting out of Ukraine. So, um, how about this story? <laughs> how about this story? The U.S. Navy overspent on Project Ukraine $400 million. A $400 million overspent. The report released on Tuesday by the U.S. Department of Defense Office of Inspector General OIG stated that the Navy overexecuted its funding three times during fiscal year 2022 when it came to Ukraine's supplemental assistance. While the U.S. Navy appropriated around $1.7 billion in funds to Ukraine, the watchdog found that the branch overexecuted its allotment of Ukraine assistant funds, totaling $398.9 million dollars. The overspending was due to the Navy's failure to address long-standing problems with its automated accounting systems. Yeah, those, those automated accounting systems, they're always screwing up. <laughs> they're always screwing up. <laughs> Somehow the Navy just managed to spend, overspend. Well, no, 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 not overspend. Over-execute. They over-executed by $400 million. <laughs> Over-executed. <laughs> that's, that's a nice way of, of phrasing it. 
And we over-executed $400 million. Where is that $400 million? It's been over-executed. Damn accounting software. Damn accounting software. Always over-executing. Well, yeah. not, uh, not washing machine stuff. Not washing stuff. Nope. None of that going on. They're over-executing. I'm, I'm sure they're going to fix the accounting software glitch any any moment now. <laughs> you don't want the, the Pentagon, the U.S. Navy, doing any more of that over-executing, do you? <laughs> oh, boy. $400 million, huh? It's probably peanuts in the grand scheme of things. That's the tragic part. $400 million is probably nothing. When, uh, when you take into account two, three, four hundred billion that has probably been spent on Project Ukraine. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that news came out yesterday as well. Biden, when he was in uh, New York City at Radio City Music Hall with Clinton and Obama, he said that Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar are ready to normalize relations with Israel. That is what Biden said when he was at this $25 million fundraiser in New York City. U.S. President Joe Biden said at a campaign event on Thursday that Arab states, including Saudi Arabia and Qatar, are ready for full normalization of ties with Israel. During the event, which was meant to show unity in the Democratic Party ahead of U.S. elections in November this year, Biden was joined on stage by former Presidents Obama and Clinton. Quote, I've been working with the Saudis and with all other Arab countries, including Egypt and Jordan and Qatar. They're prepared to fully recognize Israel. There has to be a post-Gaza plan and there has to be a trade to a two-state solution doesn't have to occur today. It has to be progressive, and I think we can do that, Biden said. So Alensky may not be the only world leader that is delusional. No doubt Biden is, is, is delusional. But, um, you know, in, well, in Alensky's case, he's probably delusional because of some of the destructive habits that he's allegedly engaged in. And, uh, and in Biden's case, well, the delusion is probably due to his, his deteriorating uh, mental condition. Probably, maybe, allegedly, I don't know. I don't know. Biden says that he's sharp as a tack. The doctors, the White House doctors, say that Biden is as sharp as ever, so who knows. I don't, I don't see how Saudi Arabia and Qatar are going to normalize relations with Israel anytime soon. Anytime ever, actually. I don't think that's going to happen for a very, very, very long time, but who knows. Who knows? Maybe Biden knows something that, that we don't know. Maybe he sees things that we don't see. Biden, after all, is a, a foreign policy master. That is what they told us when Biden entered the White House. He is a foreign policy wizard. So should we do some, uh, some clown worlds? I read a story this morning. One sec, let me pull it up. I think I have it bookmarked. Maybe I have it bookmarked. Maybe I don't. Yes, I do. Where the, the Paris mayor actually said that Russian athletes are not welcome at the Olympics. The mayor of Paris has suggested that Russian and Belarusian contestants stay away from this summer's Olympic Games in the French capital, despite being officially allowed to compete as neutrals. I want to tell the Russian and Belarusian athletes that they are not welcome in Paris, Anne Hidalgo told Ukrainian athletes at a training center in Kiev on Thursday while on a visit to Ukraine. Quite a statement from the mayor of Paris, huh? You're not welcome in Paris. In the near future, in the near future, uh, Russia and BRICS, they're going to create their own, their parallel Olympic Games. And uh, the Olympic Games are going to be no more. That's going to happen. 
you watch. That is what is going to happen because the Olympic Games are, uh, are politicized. They're politicized and the collective West, they use the Olympic Games to, to punish countries that they don't like. And so BRICS, BRICS is going to create, they're going to have to create their own Olympic Games. And Russia's trying to do this, actually. I believe that Russia has got this in the works and, and they'll make it happen. Sooner or later, the, the Olympics will have competition. So um, Macron, since we're talking about France, Macron, I believe he was in Brazil meeting with Lula. Is that correct? Was Macron in Brazil meeting with, uh, with Lula? Anyway, photos came out, and they're all over the interwebs, which uh, show Macron with Brazilian President Lula and uh, Macron. He is flexing his, his muscles, his forearm muscles in these photos. And a lot of people are comparing these photos of Macron's forearm muscles compared to the photos that Macron's photographer released a week ago of Macron working out, working on the heavy bag. And, uh, and in those photos from a week ago, you could see that Macron's forearms and his biceps were absolutely jacked as he was getting a workout in. And uh, one week later, as he is in Brazil, Macron looks a bit deflated. His arm muscles look quite deflated. So I don't know what happened to, uh, to Macron, to the muscles in Macron's arm. Maybe he was on creatine or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was... Uh, he was using creatine and he stopped using it for about a week and all the water kind of kind of left his muscles or i don't know maybe he was uh doing something else a week ago maybe he was on something else which gave him a, a pump but uh, or maybe maybe just maybe those photos from last week of macaron working out were uh digitally enhanced i don't know perhaps <laughs> i don't know but uh yeah Macron definitely lost a lot of muscle in his, uh, in his arms. So, uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's another, another Macron mystery, I guess. <laughs> another Macron mystery. So, this photo of Ben Shapiro is all over the interwebs, standing in front of a billboard taken in 2021 with a photo of Candace Owens saying uncancelable since 1989 and this billboard was uh, promoting Candace's appearance on the Daily Wire the media outlet that Shapiro co-founded co-owns but but Shapiro has no say in who is fired and who is hired <laughs> he he has no say in who is fired from the Daily Wire. He wants everyone to know that. But uh, yeah, there is Shapiro standing in front of the Candace Owens billboard in Nashville. And I do believe this is Nashville. Her show premiering on the Daily Wire, March 19th, 2021, I believe is the date. When Candace Owens premiered her show on the Daily Wire. And there is Ben Shapiro doing his part to promote Candace Owens' show. That photo, that photo did not age very well, did it? <laughs> no, 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 it did not. Anyway, that is the video, everybody. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop, pick up some, some limited merch, and uh, take care. Happy Easter to everyone once again.